When the Rolling Stones first started, they were the best blues band around, white blues band. This was an amazing thing. Here came a band from England with our best blues music. I fell in love with them. And lucky enough that they come over to the United States and they called me and asked me to do an album cover for them. And it was called High Tide and Green Grass. That was the first time in a limousine with a major rock group, and it was frightening. All these girls and guys put their faces up against the glass, and all you see are these contorted faces of fans, and it's really ugly. And then, traveling with them in a limousine, it was embarrassing to me, you know, but I realized, of course, they had to. There's no other way they could make it through the streets. I couldn't go into Beverly Hills with them on Rodeo Drive and say, hey, let's do a picture here. There's no way. They'd have been mobbed. So I took them as far away out of the spotlight as I could. That's why we shot there in the uh, backwoods of Beverly Hills. I stuck Brian Jones in the foreground here, and I was happy about that because Brian was the one that I related to in the Stones. Brian was the blues guy, and I liked his aesthetic, and I liked his musical aesthetic, and so I related to him most. Plus, he talked to me. He may have been stoned, but he really related to me. But I love the Stones. Even the title here, Big Hits, High Tide and Green Grass. Okay, the little kid in Peoria can say, mmm, green grass, I know what they mean by that. You know, it had nothing to do with that. It was just a title. They let you imagine whatever you wanted to imagine about it. Now this is my first picture of Mick, which is iconic to me because it's his early years. I wouldn't know that it call it anger, but there was an intensity, an intensity to the music and to their drive and to their success. The Stones were about love, death, drugs, and sex. Important things. That hard-ass look, there's nothing like it. It sells more records to punk teenagers 